Hey everyone, and welcome to the very first video for the Super Data Brothers channel. Here on this channel, we're gonna be focusing on the business intelligence and data analytics industries to help give you both technical know-how and some industry perspective on what's going on both now and in the future. I'm Ryan Dolly. I'm Vice President of Technology at a boutique analytics consulting firm called PM Square, based in Chicago. And for today's inaugural topic, we're gonna be tackling something pretty simple and straightforward, and that is the split functionality in Cognos Analytics, what it's good for, when to use it, and also how to overcome one of its major shortcomings. Now, before I jump into that, of course, I'm gonna have to ask you the same thing every other YouTuber does, which is go ahead and like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. As I said, this is the first video, so we really wanna get the word out about what it is that we're trying to accomplish here on the channel uh, to get more people involved. So with that said, let me go ahead here and transition over to Cognos. So I've got data modules open. We're looking at Cognos 11.2, which is the version that came out just last week. Uh, and what we're gonna be focusing on is when and how to use Split. So what is Split and when do you wanna use it? Well, to answer the second question first, Really, when you're dealing with data that's got um, dates or you know strings that you wanna split into multiple columns, that's when it's really gonna come in handy. When I'm working with customers, I find it that I most commonly use it when I'm, I'm dealing with a, a spreadsheet, right? Somebody gives me a spreadsheet. It's not clean data, it's not nice data, it's not a data warehouse, you know, I don't have a time dim or anything like that. Um, it's, it's a little more raw. Cognos gives you the ability to really quickly do some manipulations to that data that in previous versions of the software, you'd have had to really know how to write custom calculations to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Luckily, we don't have to know how to do that anymore because of split. So while I'm going through this, I'm gonna be working off of the samples. You should have access to these if you're working through at home or at work in a Cognos environment. Um, if you don't, you can always ask it to be installed by your Cognos admin. They, it's pretty common they should have access to them. I've opened the Great Outdoors data module, and we're gonna zero in first on the order date to see what this fun feature does and why we wanna use it, okay? So right away, order date, you can see it here. And if I click on the More menu and then choose Split, it's going to pop open with this kind of wizard. Now, Cognos is smart. It looks at the data type that you've clicked on and says, okay, Ryan just clicked on a date, and so he's gonna to wanna to split that into its constituent parts, and those are year, month, day, day of week, and then maybe hour, minute, second, millisecond, that sort of thing. You'll see in a second how when I click on a different type, it gives me a totally different wizard to work through. But in this case, I might be interested in year, month, day, and day of week. So as I click on each of these, you'll see how it adds them to the preview section down below. Then I can click Next, and I have the opportunity to rename them. Now I'm gonna tell you right now that you want to do this. The reason you wanna rename them is because if you say you've got multiple dates in a table like we have here, in this case, this table is actually an Excel file, um, but we got multiple dates. We've got an order date and a ship date. So if I use the split function on order date and ship date and I don't rename them, I'm gonna have multiple columns called year, month, and day in this table, and that's no good. Nobody who's using this output is gonna know which one corresponds to which. So here you can click on the edit button and give it a new name like order year. Now, one thing you wanna make sure you do here is close the edit. If you actually go forward from here without closing edit and click okay, sometimes that can cause weird errors. So make sure you close edit before you move on from here. It's a lesson I've learned the hard way. Um, now at this point, normally I would rename month, day, and day a week. I'm not gonna do that for today's example, but like I said, when you're working on this, you definitely wanna do that. All right, now when I choose OK, it's gonna work, think for a second here. And you're gonna see that now we've got order year, month, and day. These are columns that did not exist uh, in the underlying data, um, but I've created them with just a couple clicks. So here I'm in, in the grid view, which gives me a nice preview of the data that I'm working with, and I can see order year, month, and day. Those were just created off of using the split functionality. So. The very first instance where you're gonna to wanna to use it and where I use it a lot is when I have dates and I wanna derive from those dates um, other fields like year, month, and day. Okay, when's the next situ situation when you're gonna to wanna to use it? Well, if I go down here to retailer, you'll see if I click on split here, it gives me a different 
a kind of a different experience. So in this case, I'm splitting apart words. Let's imagine you've got first name and last name, and you want to split them in a single column, and you want to split them into multiple columns. This is an easy way to do it. Um, the way you do it is you put in a type delimiter. So in this case, let's say we choose space. Once you put in that type delimiter, delimiter, it gives you this preview to show you, okay, what are the impacts of what you just did? So in this case, when I say, hey, I want you to split the retailer on space, it's going to create five new columns, um, and it'll give us this little preview of, well, what values are going to be in this column, in each column. So I can see here was the, the original name for this row, the original value, and what it's going to split it into. Again, when you choose next, it gives you the, the ability to rename them. So it's a good practice to give these more meaningful names than underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, but, which is the default. Not gonna do it for this uh, the, the sake of today's video, but you know, out in the real world, you're, world, you're gonna wanna do it. You click okay here. And again, you can see retailer one, two, three, four, and five, the result of the split function that I just used in order to split this into multiple columns. And again, in the grid view, I scroll over and I can see the result of my work. Now, we've got a lot of null here, nulls here. Maybe we don't want nulls. Uh, there's a clean function that we'll highlight in a future video that will allow us to easily remove nulls, do null handling very simply. But uh, we're not gonna cover that today. Now, there's a third situation where you might really wanna use split, and, and I think it would be really handy, but you actually can't right now. And I'm gonna be putting in a request to the Cognos dev team to give us this functionality. Uh, hopefully it comes in the near future, but where that comes into play is on uh, things like uh, order numbers, right? So if something is an integer type, which you can see over here in the properties, data type integer, it actually doesn't give me the split functionality. And that's kind of frustrating because one thing that happens a lot is you might have a, a code, like let's say you're working in finance and you're looking at chart strings, you know? Um, you might have this long string of digits and each section, maybe every four digits, actually represents a location on the chart of accounts. Well, using the split functionality would be really great. You could say, hey, every four digits, I want you to create a new column, right? you don't have the ability to automatically do that with a split function because it doesn't appear as an option when you look at the more menu for an integer. So what we wanna do in this case, say we do wanna split this out, maybe the first three digits of the order number means something and, and we wanna split that out, maybe that's order type, I don't know, okay? How do I do that without the split function? Well, you, you can still do it, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually create a calculation, which you can see here. Now. It's gonna automatically give us this kind of simple math uh, calculation builder. It's not gonna work for what we're trying to do here. We wanna use the calculation editor. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use, um, in this case, there's a couple options, but the one I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna use something called substring. So maybe we'll call, first of all, call this order type. Very important to always rename things. It's, it's when you come into this calculation editor, the very first thing you wanna do is give it a name. It's easy to forget to give it a name, and then Cognos will give it kind of the default name that it came up with. You don't want that, right? So always remember to give it a name. That's kind of one of the commandments around here. Always rename things right away. It's the first thing you do. Um, and now you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and type in um, substring. So this kind of has type ahead, which is pretty nice. I can click through um, and then choose tab, and you'll see it go, went ahead and put substring in here. Now I wanna, move order number into this. And the way this works is you provide it with kind of two digits. The first digit is where you want it to start kind of uh, cutting if, if for no other term, your, you know, the whatever you've got in there, in this case, the order number. And the second digit is where you want it to stop, okay? So in this case, um, we could go ahead and say, um, you know, uh, or rather, it, sorry, I, I misspoke. What it does is it, 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 you say, I want you to start here and I want you to go for so many digits. So in this case, we'd say, I want you to start at one and uh, I want you to go three digits, right? Because the first three digits are what means something, uh, in this case, order type. So start at one and count three digits and it should give us the first three digits in order type. And we'll go ahead and click okay. And you'll see, 
Um, now we've split out order number and order type. Order type is visible here at the at kind of the top of the table. Whenever you build a new calculation, it always goes up to the top of the table. So you can see here, order type, and now I've got those first three digits split out from the lo longer order number. Now, like I said, it'd be really nice if the split functionality was available here for that, but it's not at this time. I'm gonna be putting in a request to IBM. Uh, make sure to follow along here uh, to see, uh, you know, we'll be sharing more information about that, how you can vote for it to, to get that request a little higher on their priority list, because it'd be really a cool piece of functionality. I think it's kind of missing from split right now, but there are ways to work around it, like I showed you. Um, and so you should be armed now to go ahead and, and use this function. I use it all the time. It's, it's one of the most useful things I do in here. So with that said, uh, I want to thank you for watching the video. I, I hope you liked it. Like I said, you know, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe below. Share with anybody who you think you might need this. It'll really help us get this channel off the ground. And until next time, I'm Ryan Dolly, and we'll see you again here at Super Data Brothers.